uh, hello guys, uh, I'm Emmanuel Nakanabo, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about electric fields. So basically, an electric field is is part of uh, the electric charge, which are consists of atoms. Because as you guys know, we have atoms everywhere, like the whole entire universe and Earth is full of atoms. So, uh I can define an electric field as a very small portion of an electric charge because the electric charge is whatever is surrounding us, like the whole thing, but an electric field is created whenever there is a contact between you and a, and an object or you and, a, and a, or you and another person. So an electric field E is defined as, a, as the electric force per unit charge Q0. So we have the following formula. E is equal to F over Q0, F is the force, and then Q is the unit charge Q0. So the unit for the electric field is gonna be Newton per coulomb, and the Newton is gonna be for, for the charges, and the coulomb is gonna be for the, the, I mean the Newton is gonna be for the force, excuse me, and the coulomb is gonna be for the charge. Uh, we can also define an electric field as a vector, and by convention, points always in the direction of the force in a positive charge. So, which basically means that the electric field is always positive. So, as we say, the electric force on a charge Q is equal to F equal to Q over E, where E is the electric force per unit charge produced by the distribution of forces. So, we can also write the electric field as a vector. So, the electric field is going to be E vector equal to F vector over Q because Q is not a vector. We also know from, from Callum's law that an electric field can can have the following formula Q K over R square and when they have the same charge they will attack each other and when they have different charges they will reject each other. So based on this let's go to the diagram part. So this is basically gonna be an example of whatever we talked about. So the diagram is simple. We we'll have here a positive charge plus and then a, a negative charge minus. So as you can see, the positive charge is pointing away from the, I mean, the electric field is pointing away from the electric charge plus, and then the electric field here is pointing towards the negative charge. So for us to be able to draw an electric field, we have to know the rules. So rules and rule number one, electric field E is only created by plus charge and destroyed by a minus. Rule number two, the electric field E is symmetrical near the point charge. And the number of lines are proportional to the charges. Rule number three, electric fields never cross each other. Rule number four, electric field spreads out whenever there's room for them to do so. And the final rule is going to be the number five. The electric field are stronger when lines close together. Okay, so here we'll try to do a really specific example. So let's say we have a plus charge here and a minus charge here. So as before, we're just going to draw the electric fields, which is going to point this way. But always remember, it's going to be away from the positive charge because they're supposed to reject each other. And then this is the minus. They have to be symmetrical, remember? Okay, so now that we have the hollows actually well drawn, 
all we'll have to do is actually draw an electric field. So we'll just have to join the arrows. So we'll have this arrow coming this way and join with this one. That one comes along with this one. This one with this one. And then that one comes all the way with this one. So for a plus and a negative point charge, this is the electric field that we're going to have. Okay, so let's do another example. Like let's say we have a plus and another plus here. As we already know, points away from the charge and we will have a very strange electric field so basically this is how it's gonna go it's gonna go this way this way this way and this way so that's pretty it for the diagram and based on that i'm going to let to to leave the rest of the experiment with my group mate malik nelson so he can actually continue the rest of the experiment thank you guys i wanted to show how positive and negative charges could be transferred through slight contact with another object that has positive and negative charges. What you're going to need is two straws for each thing, two canisters, some tape. You can use wool and a comb, or you can use your hair if you don't have any wool. What you're going to do first is tear off two pieces of tape. You put one on one of these. Um, arms and another one on the other arm. Place the pieces of tape on the tabletop. You want to tear the tape off real quickly. Now that you put the tape on the different arms, what you're going to want to do is slowly push the pieces of tape together. Slowly push the arms together. And as you can see, there's a slight repel against the two pieces of tape. Now when you flip this one over, this um, part over, and you try to push them together, you see a tiny, um, you see a tiny attraction amongst the two pieces of tape. What I want to do is take off two more pieces of tape and put them on the smooth side of the pieces of tape that are already on the arms. As you can see, I added the two pieces of tape to the already attached pieces of tape. Now what you're going to have, want to do next is quickly tape off, take off those pieces of tape and then put them on the opposite arms facing the opposite way. Now as you can see, the closer you get to these pieces of tape, there's a slight bit of attraction amongst these pieces of tape. What you want to do next is create friction amongst the piece of wool with the comb. Generating enough friction on the cone with the piece of wool, what you're going to do now is you're going to put the, the comb between the two pieces of tape. As you can see, there is a slight bit of repel on one side of the tape, while there is a slight bit of attraction amongst the other, si other side. Experiment where we put the tape on the table. When we rip the tape off, the tape absorbs some of the negative charges from the table and it was transported to these things, to these um, arms right here. We put the second pieces of tape on the first pieces of tape. The second pieces of tape absorbed the negative charges from the first pieces of tape and they were able to hold on to those negative charges. As we were rubbing the comb against the piece of wool it generated enough friction to cause negative ions as stated earlier the point of this experiment was to show how charges can be absorbed and, tra and transferred through different types of objects again my name is Malik Nelson and this is our group project